Hey, Grace Chapel Life Groups. Welcome back to another Discipleship Discussions. Me and Will are with you again today. Good morning. How are you? I am great. And we are almost through the book of James. Not quite. Not quite. But almost. almost. Which, what do we got there? So we're in James uh, 5, 7 through 12 today, uh, entitled Patience in Suffering. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider who's blessed who remains steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But, of, but above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. So we're talking about kind of doesn't James start out talking about suffering isn't it he think the book starts out uh yeah counter counter all joy yeah for the trials you will face and mm -hmm. I'm sure I butcher that yeah but now I guess he you know he's kind of like and remember he comes back to suffering remember be patient in suffering so I like how um he talks about Joe because I think a lot of times whenever we think of suffering Job's like one of the first people that comes to mind because yeah. probably besides Jesus he's probably suffered more than any man on earth i would imagine it's probably pretty close yeah <laughs> probably pretty close yeah 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 and so um i always like to contrast job and job's wife because job is like you know naked i came into this world and naked i'm leaving blessed be the name of the lord and job's wife was like curse god and die <laughs> you know and, <laughs> and and what a contrast but i i'm always like be like job not job's wife yeah because yeah for one, he had a light touch on the world. You know, I think in the last part we talked about um, your life is but a vapor. You know, we're just mm -hmm. a mist. It's here for a while. So Job had that light touch. And then um, he also had a gratitude, I think, just knowing that no matter what, he still has the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really, like, the word integrity pops in my head. Yeah. Um, it's been a big word this week for me. Um, but that word integrity, like, doing the right thing when no one's looking like it's mm -hmm. the there's a um if you're patient in your suffering like there's an integrity there that you have to cling to and hang on to and you know even the even the way we end this with your yes be yes and your no be no it's like mm -hmm. don't don't get caught playing the yeah well no i'm not doing that well yeah i am mm -hmm. well no i'm not well yeah you know just yeah stand firm on it like Establish your what was to say? Establish your heart. That's good. You know? Establish your heart. <clears throat> establish your heart. That kind of seems like something that you would um, think about beforehand. It wouldn't just you wouldn't just be like caught in the moment. You would say uh, beforehand, I'm going to establish my heart so that mm -hmm. when the time comes, you're established. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to put yeah. it on something firm. Yeah. And if you're going to put it on something firm, then then put your heart on the Lord. That's good. Um. You know. I always think of the Christian life as kind of like college. I always talk about marriage being kind of like school as well, because you, you learn so much about yourself. But Christian life really is like college, and, and like suffering are like the pop quizzes, I think. You know, we, we, don't ex we never expect suffering, or usually we don't expect suffering. It just kind of like, boom, hits us. Yeah. It's like a pop quiz. And, um, you know, just like, a, just like I did in school, I usually failed. But <laughs> 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 um, you know, sometimes we pass, sometimes we fail. Yeah. But... Um, but God doesn't let us suffer for no reason. It's like suffering is not just some arbitrary, random thing. It's if if we're Christians, God has a greater purpose in it. It's not just vanity. It's like God allows us to go through these things so that you know we can be refined and purified and and you know become that A student. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a um, there's a testing in that. You're trying to learn something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can you can learn a lot by reading a book, but you can learn a lot more by putting your knowledge on paper to see how it st stacks up with what's in the book. Like mm -hmm. with what's 
where is your truth combined with the truth? Where yeah. are you falling short? Where are you? Where do you have it right? Where do you have it wrong? Um, so I think in those in those trials, when you're when you know when your patience is being tested, when you're you know when you're suffering, when you're going through whatever it may be, like having the reliability to just go, you know what, God's got this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to fret about it. I'm not going to worry about it. Like. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. I've established my heart in Him. Mm-hmm. The firm foundation mm-hmm. of my faith is in Jesus, and that's where I'm going to put it, and that's where I'm going to go. Yeah. Have you ever? I'm. I don't know. I'm sure you've all probably seen people, but I see people from time to time that a crisis happens in their life. Maybe a loved one dies, and it just kind of, for some reason, that their hearts get bitter and they turn away from the Lord. They could even walk away from the Lord. And I, so I, you know, I think in suffering, kind of like Joseph. You know, I think he asked this question, you know, like, where's God? Like, where are you? Like, like people think, where is God in this situation? And a, a lot of people, they can't find God in suffering. And so it, they're like, well, I'm done with God, or I don't believe in God, or whatever. And they end up, like, I've seen people leave the faith because just of someone dying. Um, not that, you know, that's not a small thing. It's a huge thing. Someone yeah. dying is a very, very big thing. But, like, nothing on this earth should cause us to walk away from the Lord. And and I think but that where is God part in suffering is so so heavy on people. It is. It is. And, uh, you know, I, I, I value the fact that, like, um, if we're going to go with death, like my mom, when she transitioned to heaven a couple of years ago, or even my, my one of my best friends just a couple months ago, it's like I treasure the fact that, that, that I'm a Christian, that I have the faith I have, because it made that whole process both times a lot easier. It doesn't mean that the that the pain isn't there, mm-hmm. that the um, you know suffering the loss of a, of a, of a of a dear friend and a and my and my mom like it doesn't it doesn't diminish that, mm-hmm. but it just makes the process yeah a little a little easier. There's a comfort there, mm-hmm. um, you know. So yeah, I mean, I, people can get embittered. Um, with a lot of things very quickly, uh, especially in our microwave society. Yeah. Um, but to have that, but to have the patience to be able to, you know, as, as it says, to be steadfast. Yeah. To be resolute in something that it's not going to shift what you think about God. Like yeah. that's, it's huge. that's a beautiful place to be. I just noticed something that I've never, you know, I know we've read this passage, you know, before we sat down just to kind of look over it, but, this do not grumble against one another so that you're not judged. It's kind of interesting that it's stuck. This whole section is about suffering, but then there's this do not grumble against one another. Um, I guess that's something that's a byproduct of suffering is grumbling, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is, um, especially when your patience is being tested in it. Um, you know, you just, you know, some people, you know, what's the Bill Cosby phrase? I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Oh, that was him? Yeah, well, oh, I think. Okay. I think it was on one of his All comedy right. shows. Ah. Um, I, owe, I owe him some royalties. Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think there's just that you get so tired of being patient, of, of, of sitting in the suffering, mm-hmm. of dealing with, with what you're dealing with, that it's really easy just to start you know, picking your brother or your sister apart. Yeah. And just like, you know, well, you, you're not in this, I am, and you don't know what I'm going through, but, you, yeah. you know, I know what I'm going, you know. Yeah, that's you, good, you yeah. just start getting, you just start getting, you know, like your patience is wearing thin. Yeah. And you just don't have it anymore. And I think mm-hmm. people, you know, it's a it's a it's an easy place to get to sometimes. Uh, you know, people usually have the best intentions, right. but a horrible delivery. Yeah. And um, um, I think it's uh, – it can be an easy place to get to when someone says something that just ruffles your feathers a little bit wrong. Yeah. Um, instead of just taking that moment to maybe be like, okay, they're, I, I know their heart in this situation mm-hmm. and we're just so reactive. Yeah. I was just, as you were talking, I was thinking about marriage, you know, like we've all had, you know, financial ups and downs or health, whatever, you know, marriage is, you know, it's an up and down road. And I just, you know, I've looked back, I you know when, there's been a couple of times in our marriage when my money was, oh man, it was tight. Like we were like, are we going to make it? And in those times, <clears throat> you know, you can either come together or you can grumble. But, you know, I've just seen, you know, in a marriage, you grumble with each I guess, you know, The problem is not either you or the other person. The problem is the situation. Mm-hmm. But then for some reason, you take it out on the other person. Mm-hmm. Like you let that suffering, 
you always hurt the ones you love. Yeah. So for some reason, you take the suffering. It's not anyone's fault, but you take it and you, for some reason, you, you pit each other. You, you could grumble against each other. Yeah. It's just sad. I don't know yeah. the answer to that. but I, I, I think it's just there, there's, a, there's a safety in that person. Yeah. That, um, that you, you know, we tend to feel like we can say what we want to say mm-hmm. um, without fully weighing the consequences. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we go back a couple chapters in this book of James, be uh, quick to listen, slow to speak. Yeah, that's good. good. Slow to anger, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and 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 I think that passage, he's just he's he's doubling down on that. Just like don't don't grumble against your brothers. Like mm-hmm. they're here for you. Like yeah, that's good. I love it. And then we're gonna end up uh, next week closing out James. I imagine with the prayer of faith. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, um, it's been a it's been a great study in the book of James. I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward to next week. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Well, thank you all for being with us, and we will see you again next time. Have a good one.